Hi friends, Joy here with SubRosaTea.com. Welcome to Tea Time on Tuesdays at 2. Today I am going to show you how simple it is to make homemade matcha ice cream without an ice cream maker. It really is easy. But first of all, do you know what matcha is? Have you had it before? Who already has matcha in their cupboard? Smash that like button right now. Second question, who's ever made homemade ice cream? Honestly, before this year, I just never took the time. But I am so in love and I do not own an ice cream maker. So I think you might be interested as well. So during our tea time, on Tuesdays at two videos, I intend these to be informational, educational, or inspirational. So if you have a suggestion for a tea time topic, don't hesitate to either private message us or leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching. So first of all, who knows what matcha is? Matcha is a whole tea leaf that we've ground into a powder. So if you've watched some of our other tea time videos, you may already know that matcha comes from the same tea plant that loose leaf tea does. I'm using that term generally. It, ha it The same tea plant yields us black tea, oolong, green, and white tea. When they're growing the tea plant to yield matcha, it is grown slightly differently. They throw a net over the tea plant, which makes it fight for sunlight. While it is fighting for sunlight, it produces more chlorophyll than traditionally grown tea does. So that is why you will see that matcha is a very, very bright green product. Here at Sub Rosa Tea, we only sell organically grown products. We sell 80 flavors of loose leaf tea. We currently have four flavors of matcha and over a dozen blooming teas. But I want you to really note this color that it is bright green and it's all natural. There's nothing artificially done. It's not a chemical process. This is what good matcha powder should look like. I know from experience that sometimes you can find matcha in a box on a retail store shelf for quite a lower price and when you get it home it will be a much dingier green almost brownish green product. I would encourage you to really question that if that's something that you want to consume or not. Our matcha is ceremonial grade. There are multiple grades of matcha. Ours is a fabulous quality in which you can feel secure by consuming it on a daily basis. I love matcha. I love matcha tea drinks, but I also love matcha ice cream. So why don't we get to, uh, you know, why don't we get to making some ice cream? So for those of you who don't know, matcha has I said it has chlorophyll. It also is going to react in your body the way fiber does. So people who do not eat all of their vegetables, you may really want to listen up and consider adding matcha to your daily lifestyle. It can de definitely help you in very natural ways. Um, matcha does have caffeine, but it is a very specific amino acid that gives, it should give you a very stimulating energy. It will not give you the shakes. It won't give you the jitters. It's naturally low in caffeine, but it's high in energy because of all the healthy antioxidants in the matcha product. Now at Sub Rosa Tea, we sell unflavored matcha, which is called ceremonial. And we have three flavors currently. We have a chocolate matcha, a peach matcha, and a raspberry. I can verify that absolutely all four make really, really good ice cream. So let's talk about the other options. Now with matcha, typically when you're going to be making a cup of matcha tea, like I said, matcha is a powder. So you would want to dissolve the powder in a hot liquid. 
ice cream's not hot. So that's not really going to work for us, but I want to give you some tips on that while you're thinking about what ingredients you want to use. I will post the recipe, so don't worry if I'm talking too fast. Don't worry. And it's so easy. You'll remember it. It, it literally is a very, very easy recipe. So in addition, you get to pick your flavor of matcha. Today, I'm going to make the raspberry matcha into ice cream. I'm going to show you why, because at the end, I'm going to show you um, a secret sauce. I'm going to do a keto-friendly sauce for the topping of my matcha ice cream. So I'm going to do raspberry, but all of our matcha is the same color. So um, hence, we've labeled the packages when you buy them, but like you can't tell that this is raspberry. You wouldn't want a raspberry matcha to be colored. Um, if you buy it from someone else and it is not green, if it's like an artificially colored pink, I wouldn't drink it. Also, you need to know our matcha has absolutely no sugar. There are absolutely no additives. There are no other ingredients in this product, and I do know that there are sugared matchas on the market, but that's not what we sell here at Sub Rosa Tea. So you've got your choice on matcha. Like I said, typically when you make a matcha drink, you're going to whisk your matcha into a hot liquid. So I definitely recommend the ceremonial bowl and a bamboo whisk. We sell both of these on our website. And again, friends, this is a bamboo whisk. When you are whisking matcha for a beverage, you would use it in a W shape or an M shape, but not a circular shape. That kind of just moves the powder around and you would want the powder to be dissolved, of course. Next up, so you've got choices. I live a keto lifestyle, which is great if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, or you just plain old don't react to sugar really well. So I always have heavy whipping cream in my house. It's definitely one of those top 10 items. If you live a keto lifestyle and you're not dairy free, you would have heavy whipping cream. You can also make this homemade matcha ice cream with half and half. So you don't need to go buy something special. If you have half and half, go ahead and use that instead. Next up, you get your choice of sweetener. Like I said, I'm keto, so I'm using a keto sweetener. I know the camera's backwards, but it's B-O-C-H-A. I found it online. This is actually made from a vegetable, and it really does taste like sugar, but it doesn't. It's actually quite sweet. So I'm not going to use quite as much as the traditional recipe, but the recipe I will post is a great guideline for those of you who are using sugar. My tip to you is to use a granular sugar product. Do not use confectioners or powdered sugar. It's just not an equal ratio. You want granular sugar. Next up, vanilla. If you do any baking like I do, I'm going to recommend pure vanilla, okay? Keep in mind, this is a great step, though, if you want something different that I'm not talking about. Let's say you want coconut ice cream. Go ahead, use the ceremonial or any of the other ones, it would be great too, but use the ceremonial matcha and then maybe a coconut extract, something like that. But I'm gonna use vanilla. Guess what? That's it. Those are all the ingredients. You've got your matcha, your cream, your sugar, your vanilla. Oh my gosh, it's that simple, friends. But there's two more things that you need to have and I'm, I'm really hoping you already have them because I did. You're gonna need coarse sea salt for this with a bag of ice. Anybody not have a bag of ice? Uh, right now, where I live, it is 90 degrees out. It, is, it was 90 all last week. It's going to be 90 all this week. Homemade matcha ice cream is definitely called for, and all you really need is ice and salt. Why ice? I mean, why salt? Salt actually is going to lower the temperature of your ice. I know. Science, right? You gotta love it. So it's going to be able to help you to make ice cream. If you don't have coarse salt, you got to go out and get it. Or if you have a um, an ice cream maker, if you're not going to do it handmade like I am, then maybe you don't need the salt. I've never had an ice cream maker, so I can't really advise you on that one. So literally, the next two things, I bet you've already got them in your house. Baggies. You're going to need a sandwich size bag and a gallon size bag all the things that you probably already have. So what you're gonna do is take one cup of your dairy. Now again, think this one through. If you're using heavy whipping cream, it is thick, it's heavy, it's gonna make great ice cream. But matcha isn't going to just dissolve in cold, thick um, liquid, okay? So you, if you're gonna use half and half, 
you can whisk it. If you're going to use whipping cream, I wouldn't put it in a blender because it's just gonna turn into heavy whipping cream. Like it's gonna turn into spray whipped cream, not liquid. <laughs> so whisking is good or bringing up your dairy product just to warmth, a simmer, and then whisk your matcha and you want it to dissolve. So the end result's gonna look like this. It's literally gonna look like the Incredible Hulk came over to your house and made some liquid for you. I don't know. It's a great color. It really is wonderful. But you don't want to just put powder into a cold liquid and not whisk it or try to dissolve it at all because it'll just be chunky. It'll look like spinach dip. <laughs> and you don't want that. You want the matcha to dissolve. So I'd recommend whisking it. And of course, so you've got one cup of your dairy, your heavy whipping cream or half and half, two teaspoons matcha, no matter what flavor, two teaspoons sugar, again, no matter what kind, half a teaspoon of vanilla. And that's literally the whole recipe. So you've got your cup here, which again, this is the, the easiest recipe I've ever made that's easy to double. It's just so easy that if you buy um, like 32 ounces of cream or a 16 ounce bottle, go ahead and double. You are gonna love this ice cream. Next up in the big bag, three cups of ice. So three cups of ice to a quarter cup salt. Easy peasy again on the recipes, right? You don't need a lot, but it's all in here. So next up friends, you are literally gonna put the little baggie in the big baggie. Now, I think it's pretty obvious. You're gonna definitely squish all the air out. Make sure you've squished the air out of that little baggie before you put it in. Make sure you have squished the air on the big baggie before you shake it up. Guess what you get to do next? Shake it. That's literally it. Who doesn't have this skill? I think everyone can make homemade matcha ice cream. You do have to shake it for a few minutes. What can I say? So after about 10 minutes, you're going to get something that's like a milkshake. Um, 15 minutes, you're going to get around soft serve ice cream. And if you have the endurance to go for the full 20 minutes of shaking <laughs> your matcha in with your ice, you will get a harder type ice cream product. I've got toppings for you because, hello, I've got plenty of time. Do you? I do. So, next thing, sauce. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about toppings. Who here has honey in their cabinet? I am guessing those of you who drink tea at your house, you might already have honey. Think about it. Would that make a fabulous topping for matcha ice cream? Of course it would. What goes with honey in my house? pistachios. Oh yes, those are two perfect toppings right on, especially the ceremonial. Totally awesome. Next up, homemade sauce. I'm all about this. If I have fresh berries in the house and I'm having a sweet dessert, I'm going to make homemade sauce. So I'm calling it a sauce. It could be called a compote or a syrup, but it's homemade. If you buy a store-bought fruit type sauce, it might have high fructose corn syrup in it. And I'm not really saying you shouldn't enjoy that product. I'm saying I can't enjoy it because I live a keto lifestyle. That's on the off list. But what I can do, again, three ingredients. I'm going to take my super small saucepan. I'm going to do a layer of berries. In this case, can you tell how dark it is? and how thick it is. This was a combination of raspberries and blackberries. I had half a container of each, so I just one thin layer on the bottom of my saucepan. I sprinkled in my keto sweetener, not too much. It just isn't necessary. And then I covered it with water. Again, not too much. I brought it up to a boil and in no time flat, I could whisk the berries and the water evaporated enough to make a syrup or a sauce and this is nice and sweet not that it wouldn't have been sweet just to add berries but this is kind of fun it's nice and thick enough if you can tell it's thick enough beautiful easily to go on to my ice cream I will remind you, if you didn't know, that raspberries do have little seeds. So if that upsets you in any way, like if you have dentures or sensitive teeth, you may want to push your raspberry compote through a fine mesh sieve. We sell brew bags with the cheesecloth or some kind of strainer to keep all the seeds up in and then all of your beautiful compote ice cream sauce in the bottom of your pan. 
I will also say that your sauce will naturally thicken as it cools and I personally like a colder sauce on my ice cream I don't really want a hot sauce but this is something easy to do I love it with blueberries I just made that yesterday oh afterwards it's your choice depending on the sweetness of your berries but you might like to add a pat of butter and a pinch of vanilla kind of just depending on the berry sauce that you make now for one specific person who I know watches my videos, who absolutely loves all of our chocolate teas, I wanted to also tell you a great method how to make a chocolate sauce with our tea. So it's very similar to the berries, but first you have to make tea. So I know that she's gonna wanna use that chocolate ginger brownie tea that we sell. It is a black tea, but we've got a coconut chocolate tea. We've got a cherry chocolate tea. Um, we've got a spiced Mexican chocolate, which is so good, both as ice cream and on top of ice cream because it has cinnamon and chilies to it. We sell all of those, so any of our chocolate teas would be great. What I would do is I would do literally four times the amount of tea and half the water, whatever it says on the package. Here at Sub Rosa Tea, all of our tea packages have brewing instructions. Four times the tea, half the water, steeped. Then you're gonna repeat the process to make your sauce. You're gonna use your steeped tea in with a little bit of sweetener depending on if it needs more water or not. It might not. I would just do equal parts sweetener to your finished tea product. Boil it, okay? Eventually, it's going to thicken. Again, you have a choice to add vanilla if you choose to do so, or again, another flavored con um, concentrate or extract. And then you've got a beautiful chocolate sauce that you can pour right over your ice cream. So I do hope that some of these tips and techniques will be utilized. If you make yourself some homemade matcha ice cream, feel free to snap a pic, leave us a post, either on a comment on this or a separate one. Everything I talked about today, tea-wise anyway, <laughs> can be purchased on our website at Sub Rosa Tea. Our teas are organically grown, no sugar, no carbs, no calories. So depending on your lifestyle, the finished end um, ice cream product may or may not have sugar in it, but it would have calories and most likely some carbohydrates. Kind of just depends on how much. But for me, one cup of cream makes a good two scoops of ice cream. So it makes me very happy for very, very little effort. Thank you, friends. Thank you for watching today's video. I cannot wait to get shaken and grooving and jiving on my ice cream. It will be ready to eat in about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm excited. See you next time, friends. No matter what you do with the rest of your day, have yourself a cup of tea and take care of you. Bye-bye, friends.